what's up you guys I realize I'm not in a pool anymore and I was at the beginning but the dog wouldn't stop jumping in and swimming <laughs> and I was too scared of water getting on the camera so it's here so a lot of you guys have been hanging around my channel for a while or you can look at other videos on my channel if you want but imagine if I did an instructional that looked like this. Grab my wrist? No, I mean, no. Grab it like regular? No. With two, with your both? No, like, 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 like this. No. Oh. Mm -hmm. So all I need to do is. <laughs> Or imagine as a grappler, catch wrestler, I was showing you a takedown defense like this. Again? Okay. Honestly, if I put out stuff like that, you guys would think I was doing a Napoleon Dynamite bit. Like, you would think I was making fun. <laughs> That's how ridiculous this is. Now here's the thing about this. Josh Fabia did exactly this unironically. My wrist. Two hands on my hand. Looks like a little So he's gonna break my wrist. We're gonna place a person's hand in that same way. Oh. And now we're able to work. I want to first make a disclaimer. Uh, I'm not one of those MMA douchebags that's like thinks traditional martial arts have no purpose and they're really bad. I love martial arts and I'm aware that a lot of times, especially with traditional martial arts, it's about the principle of what's being taught about the move. For example, the video that I'm making fun of, uh, there is an actual application that is the principle of that. It's called a cow catcher, but it's legit. So, please don't think that either about traditional martial arts. That's not what this is about. This video isn't about um, critiquing the martial arts or the training of Joshua Fabia. It's to talk about how uh, something else actually completely different that talking about the Fabia and Diego situation only kind of swings us into. I don't know how many of you guys know this, that uh, I studied cult recruitment and recovery um, when I was in school. It was religion and cult recruitment and recovery. Um, psychology was, was my area of study. And then I ended up getting punched in the face for a living. So stay in school. Uh, but what interested me about the subject is the fact that my whole life I've been interested in martial arts. And just that by the design of martial arts, it can be very cult-like at times. And those of you that study martial arts you, you you know what I'm talking about. You have a team member or a different team that you're a rival of where they're really culty. Um, and this isn't this isn't the fault of martial arts. But you know martial arts with its it, it has uh, by design have characteristics that that a lot of cults have uh, levels of lear levels of knowledge, just the belt levels themselves. Um, there's usually one head instructor that knows all or, or, or is the all knowing guy. Uh, there are some schools or sports teams where if someone goes somewhere else, um, they are chastised and looked down on and talked bad about. Um, and it's taken very personal. I'm not saying martial arts instructors are all cult leaders. What I'm saying is that oftentimes being a leader of something, whether it's a coach, uh, it could be a teacher, it could be anything, 
Um, it kind of attracts this kind of personality. Um, so, you know, I think everyone can, we can say, I, I think everyone knows without question that Fabia is like a dangerous and toxic dude, especially for Diego. We obviously all know he's not a cult leader because you kind of have to have a following to be a cult leader. He has some dangerous traits that make him a bad leader and obviously um, some, some things that make him, in my opinion, not a good dude altogether, regardless of his personality traits. You know, a grandiose sense of self is a, is a trait that Fabia has that's, a, that's like a, a cult leader trait. Um, I think he thinks he knows way more about mixed martial arts fighting than he actually does. Uh, we've all seen that. Anybody that studies MMA that's seen his trainings or heard him talk, I think, can know that. I think um, he's exploitative. That's another common trait. He, uh, with the OnlyFans that he made for Diego, that's one thing. I think he was obviously using Diego. We see that <sighs> the stupid training video that he put out where at the beginning he's like, Is camera rolling? And here's the thing. This, this video got out, and you can look at any other channel, and they'll talk about CTE and body hardening is not happen in your brain. Um, and, and whatnot, but I think the thing that bothers me the most about this video is, uh, goes to another dangerous trait of a dangerous leader where he makes, it's all about, it's all for him. So there's a clip where Diego's hanging upside down, he's hitting him. And when we've done body conditioning, that's not an uncommon thing in the martial arts. You see Muay Thai fighters hardening their shins. Uh, we used to say at the end of like a two and a half hour practice, we would stand, you know, and let someone t t t on our on our midsection. Um, there's at one of my teams I trained with, we would take however many body shots for however many years birthday it was, uh, but never the head. Um, and the other thing is that when I'm doing this, you'll see, you see me doing this, <clears throat> and that's not what he's doing. You see. Fabia trying to show off that he knows what he's doing. And here's how I can tell. He's hitting Diego, and then he's moving as though he's hitting a heavy bag. So when you hit a heavy bag, you'll be like, wham, wham, and then move, bob and weave, bang, bob, move, cover, whap, bah. You'll move to mimic a fight. He's doing this. When he's hitting Diego, there's no reason you're not gonna be you're not using Diego as a heavy bag. Your body conditioning, even if I'm doing uh, kicks on the leg, it's gonna be like nice and easy. It's not gonna be like cover whap. <laughs> like there's not there's no reason to act like that unless you want to show off to people watching that you know fighting, and that shows that this was all about him. It's a real subtle detail, but. Um, that's a, that's a very dangerous thing for a coach, um, a leader of any kind, to have. Uh, another thing we see that's common is how he um, is hyper-focused on how others perceive him. So we see him in a meeting that is about Diego step in and be like, Hey, you guys, so you guys say things on commentary and then they come at me on social media. It was so bad. Probably allowing the media to turn the narrative on the guy that's trying to help people here. And when you respect these two legends, it seems a little disrespectful that you don't recognize that they respect me. And if you're going to be the one telling the narrative, that's on you when I'm getting <laughs> by the public, by millions of people. Now, if you're going to be here, like, leveraging off of all this, man, notice I'm on the end of the <laughs> dick here, and none of you have stood up for anybody that needed to be stood up for. So he turns the whole thing into how the media looks bad at him. And you hear Paul Felder talk about it, and we all know social media is designed to be negative. There's a like button, and the only way to express that you dislike something is to comment. If you like something, you're just gonna hit like. But if you dislike something, you have to com Like, it's designed so that everything you read is negative. It's made that way. We all know this. How, how is he in the position that he thinks he's in and he take that so serious? It's because it's, a, it's just a common trait.
Even though he shares some characteristics that cult leaders have, we know he's not a cult leader. He's just not... Uh, he's dangerous. He's dangerous for sure. But to bring this kind of full circle, what I want to talk about is if you are looking for a martial arts school or a martial art or a fight team or a um, gym, uh, a sports team, a mentor, uh, what are the signs to look for so that you don't get caught up in something like this? So here's some key things to look for um, in a good leader no matter what type of leader or for what purpose you're wanting this. I think one big thing is that they answer your questions without judgment. So you can, and this goes kind of hand in hand with the fact that they um, welcome critical thinking and discussion and exploration. If you are confident in yourself, if you're not insecure, you're not gonna be afraid of someone exploring and asking questions and you're not gonna be afraid yourself of exploring and asking questions and looking to always get better. And that's another one. Just because they're a leader doesn't mean they should stop learning. Make sure they're still trying to get better too. Um, kind of goes hand in hand. A good leader should admit when they make a mistake. That's a big one. A lot of times bad leaders will uh, try to spin it so they're not wrong or they're above reproach. There's a reason why they're wrong but it's okay for them to be wrong but no one else. Um, so look for that. Another one is um, a good leader will welcome communication with friends and family. If they're asking you to cut people off, that's a bad sign. Oh, here's a big one. A good leader isn't going to vilify the people that have to leave, no matter the reason, okay? They're not gonna talk bad um, just because someone leaves. You see this, like I said before, in a lot of martial arts schools. Someone leaves to go to a different gym. You're not allowed to talk to them anymore. Whatever. That's just, that's, that's, that's lame. Again, it's just insecurity. Uh, you know, as soon as Diego announced um, professionally and respectfully that he was no longer working with Fabia, um, the, like the next day, Fabia is going on a podcast airing all of Diego's dirty laundry. Um saying horrible things uh who knows if they're true but even if they are how could he expect anyone to trust him to confide in him ever again uh that's just that's a that's a massive massive uh bad sign but all this being said the whole point is i didn't want to get you can you can look up plenty of videos if you want to see all the goofy stuff that that fabia's done that's not it um I just wanted to kind of m knowing that martial arts has a tendency for these types of situations I wanted to to, to put out some things to, to people that maybe don't know uh, they don't know anything about martial arts they don't know anything about whatever it is they're trying to, to find um, just some things to look for in a good leader someone to look up to a good a good role model so yeah, sorry I didn't get this with the cool new backdrop in the pool, but at least you got to see the puppy, right? What's up, you guys? This is future Shayna. I just got done working out and um, was editing the video and throwing it together and realized that I forgot to say one really important thing. Um, the, like, main basic thing to look for if you're looking for a, a martial arts team, a coach of any kind, um, this phrase, you judge a tree by its fruit. So just look at what this coach or school has produced and where those people that have been produced by this are. Is that a place you want to be? It's the biggest sign. You know, um, a lot of people can talk a good game, but judge a tree by its fruit. Thanks for watching Past Shana.